We're actually live, you know, just um, so I'm going to be answering as much Q&A. So, uh, hey, 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 you are live at Stone Coat Countertops right now. We are Epoxy Live. We are the Epoxy Academy. You're going to learn in this video step by step how we apply the ultimate top coat. The ultimate top coat is absolutely appropriately named. Oh, turn off my phone here. Guys, I'm going to be on uh, on the comments, okay? Mitch actually had to be out today, so we're going to be tag teaming this. Luke's behind the camera. Chris is at the brains of the operation. Doc is in the other room getting the next video queued up and ready to go for you. We have an exciting... Ah, I mean, this ain't no show. It's not an episode. We got an exciting training. This is live. I'm actually talking to you right now, teaching you how to apply this product, the Ultimate Top Coat. It goes hand in hand with our Platinum system. If you've been watching our channel lately, you've seen the last two days we went live. We did three videos in two days live, all over an hour long, because it was requested that we show every idiosyncratic thing that's possible in this system. So that's what this is about. You actually helped us out so much. In the last few days, we've gotten thousands of new subscribers. Thank you so much. Please continue to support. We are in the race to a million subscribers, the mountaintop to a million. See this peak at the top of our shirt? That's the million. Help us get there. Click that subscribe button. Show this to your communities, your friends. Share this on your social media and say, hey, these are some folks that really try to teach me how to do this the right way to help me change the game. You looking to save money on your own project? Are you looking to build a business? In this video, we're going to teach you how to finish your jobs ultimate way and that's what this ultimate top coat i've been in this industry for years i've been a professional contractor my entire my entire adult life i grew up uh working on flipping houses and installing windows and doors and flooring and tile and crown molding and cabinetry from scratch i learned how to bevel glass as a little kid with my dad who made leaded glass windows i've been in the trades i understand what it takes to please customers i understand the relationship between quality product and quality construction and in this video, we're going to show you how to finish like a pro. Stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. All right, let's get started. We got a very cool treat for you. So this piece that we've done over the last couple days, we did the platinum as the color coat and that is titled Fractured Sunstone. It's, it's our epoxy training found on our portal on our website under training. If you go there, we'll show you to get there later in the show. Then we did a clear coat yesterday. It dried. It laid out really good. This is the platinum product and we always recommend a top coat over the platinum. The platinum is non-yellowing, fast drying, and designed for the professional. If you're looking at a very glossy surface that you don't want to use the ultimate top coat, this video isn't for you. You're going to want to watch art coat and our original stone coat. That's how you get a glossy surface that doesn't require a top coat. This is a hand-to-hand -hand system. You're going to want the top coat with the platinum. You're going to want to add that durability. If you're a professional epoxy installer, use the platinum, use the top coat. It will change the way your customers give you referrals and your success will be unparalleled. It's a little harder to use, but the purpose of this video is to show you everything you need to know to get consistency in the top coat no matter what climate you're in. So, Luke, I'm gonna grab the camera. We're gonna switch places here for a second. Okay. Uh, here, let's, can we do a selfie? Yeah. All right, there we go. Is that is hey. that working? Yeah. Luke, Luke is uh, one of our amazing editors. Thanks. You've been in construction for a number of years. You had your own business doing garage doors. Yep, yep. Uh, your passion is video. Yeah. Right, so you're like, Mike, I know construction, I can help your business out, but I'm really good at video. Keeps my hands clean too. What have you been working on the last couple days? So we've been working on the top coat video that you guys are about to see. We explain every single thing step by step along the way so that there's no confusion for you guys to kill your uh, next upcoming project, so. Have this, has this uh, here, I'll go, I, I, dude, I suck at holding this thing. Yeah. You're strong, dude. 
Has this uh, project been um, uploaded yet? It has not. Is it super yet. secret? Super, almost secret. Uh huh. We're about to release it to the world, but because they're joining us live, we're going to give you a preview. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show you what that training is. That training is going to live right there next to the product. Yeah. So if you go on the website and you look up the top coat, right next to the top coat product is going to be the video that you're about to see. On our whole website, uh, let's go, let's go over here with Chris. Okay. So Chris, on our whole website, you built our website, right, bro? That's right. So this is Chris. Chris is also the brains behind this whole thing. So uh, on our website, you actually you actually can go find more more about every single product. You, we have videos, and and these videos are right here. When we have a finger that points at a video. It, it, it shows it's about the product. So on all of our website, they can go research the product. If they need product knowledge and need to know what's the difference between art coat, the original stone coat, what's the difference between the flooring epoxy, the casting, the quick coat. Um, you taught them through video, right, Chris? We do. We all do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and we actually, we're going to subcontract out our website and, and you're like, Mike, we need to keep this in house so that a, we know what our customers need to know, and B, you've never built a website before, and because you're, um, he's a genius, guys. Like, <laughs> like he knows how to learn any. Like, instead of okay Google, we say okay Chris, <laughs> right? So Chris figured out how to build a website. I hope you guys like that. Let us know. How do you like the new website? It's been out for what a couple months now. Uh, yeah, that seems right. And you're maintaining it, so feedback would be great. If you if you want other tools, there's volume calculators everything here on our website we now have a training go to our tutorial center here right there so you go to our tutorial center we have tutorials set up in categories of countertops woodworking art flooring showers go to the new portal that mitch created where's that at it's on the home page that's right so you go to the home page and you come down here to training and that's where you're going to find all of these live videos this is how we made this piece and then this is how we did the one yesterday and then this is how we clear coated yesterday. And then the one we put up today, we'll talk about the ultimate top coat. So we hope that you like this Epoxy Academy. Um, this information is, is, is valuable. But the reason I came over here was to really uh, ask you something that now I forgot. Do you remember what I was going to ask, Chris? You could ask me what you're going to ask me. What was I going to ask you? I don't know. <laughs> okay, Chris. Okay, so guys, I want to show you the preview that we t talked about. So Chris, can you pull that up and show them this video? You cool right with here. that? Right there. All Let's right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Have you seen the ultimate top coat? This is how I get that beautiful natural sheen level and the ultimate durability on my projects. I have worked with top coats my entire professional career. I have never come across anything that is quite as durable and easy to use as this product is. That's why we formulated it ourselves right here in the USA. We made this product designed to go with all of our systems. This coating is unparalleled in protection. This side is our normal stone coat epoxy and this side is our normal stone coat epoxy with the ultimate top coat over it stone coat countertops are designed to handle the use and abuse of your countertops your tables desktops and more your vanities your hearse anything that you're dealing with in your house this coating is designed to be tough stuff the penny test that penny's getting hot look at that the tool test. The screw head scratch test. I almost forgot. The heat test. Woohoo, that's hot, man. That's really hot. <laughs> I don't want to worry when I'm doing construction on my projects that I'm sliding tape measures and tools, standing on the countertops to adjust lighting. I want to be able to get my job done and not worry about my finished surfaces. The ultimate top coat allows me to do so and not worry. Now let's learn how to apply it. It's simple as do it yourself. I'm going to show you the two roller technique. We're going to go ahead and apply this wet and then we'll dry roll it so it looks like we have a nice tight sprayed on finish but it's as easy as do it yourself 
in your own garage, your kitchen. Heck, you can do this right on site. Get it done and get it done right. You can get these projects done so you can use them in a couple of days. It's a fantastic set time and allows you to get right back to full use. All right, let's go over the tools and sundries that you're gonna need for the ultimate top coat so that you're set up, you're ready to go, and it's a flawless finish every time. You want repeatable results, and that's about being organized. I'm using a microfiber one quarter inch nap roller. I like these rollers because they're easy to de-lint. You just simply use some tape and you roll it across that roller and you pull off any excess fibers. I also have two rollers here. This one's for wet, this one's for dry. I'll get more to that in a minute. But I've marked this with a piece of tape. It's almost like a candy cane. That way my eye knows this is for dry rolling, this is for wet rolling. That's a pro tip. You're gonna need some masking tape to remove that excess lint off of your rollers. You're gonna need a stir stick. You're gonna need a roller tray. You're also gonna need some gloves and just a tad bit of water as well as a mixing container. This is a two to one ratio. That's two parts A to one part B. Two parts resin, one part hardener. Okay, then I add just a touch of water so that I go ahead and thin the material just a hair. You can do it up to about 2% or about a half ounce per kit. Okay, don't worry about that. I add a little bit of water just to consistency. So I roll that out, it dissipates, and it makes a very tight finish. Don't forget to sand the surface with 220 grit sandpaper and wipe the dust. I also used a little bit of acetone to wipe any excess dust, so I ensure that I have a clean surface. Our 24 ounce kit is designed to do a 40 to 50 square foot kitchen. A little goes a long way, but what I like to do is slop a lot of material right in the center of my piece, use my wet roller to spread that out, and then come back and dry roll it. I don't start right on the edges of my surface. That's a pro tip of how I get consistency every time. Be sure not to let the contents of part A settle in the bottom of the bottle. There is a matting agent to give you that natural finish, and you wanna make sure that you thoroughly mix that. You can even pour all of the contents of part A out into a bucket, mix that and put it back in with a funnel, or just simply shake that bottle a little bit, agitate that before you pour, and then go ahead and start with your part A. I have a few minutes to mix this, okay? I'm gonna mix it up thoroughly with the paint stick. After I've got it agitated, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of water. For this amount, I'm gonna use about a cap full of water here and I'm happy, okay? After I do that, I'm gonna mix it again. Then I'm gonna pour all the contents right there in my paint tray, and I'll start to roll this on the surface. As I roll it on the surface, remember, you're gonna be tempted to come back and try to remove every single lap line on your first go. That's not necessary, it's not gonna happen until that material tightens up and dries. That's when the lap lines disappear and you get that flawless finish. Okay, I'm gonna start with my roller that has been designated for the wet rolling, and then I'll proceed to the dry roller after I've applied it wet. Here we go. I submerge everything in that material. You can see that, that roller is just getting under and saturated in that material. I'm gonna roll off some of that excess just to really get it even on that roller. Now I'm gonna take this roller right to the center of my piece, and I'm gonna roll it out in the center. And then I'm gonna take that and use that as my reservoir, okay? I'm gonna get a little bit more on the roller, and it's important to really prime that roller when you start, because you want enough material on that roller, okay? Sometimes as you start, that roller is really dry because it hasn't hit any material yet, and you don't have quite enough. Okay, now I'm gonna do those edges. Okay, roll those edges. Roll that bull nose of the edge. And then I'm gonna remove most of the material that I've applied with my roller. And I'm gonna put all of the pressure on this back end of the roller and leave this light and feathery as to remove the lap lines. Let me show you how. So all my weight is right over here, okay? I'm just going through here and I'm just rolling this one final time with the wet roller. Okay, now I've switched to my dry roller and I'm just gonna go over the surface and I'm gonna dry roll it. And I'm overlapping about 50%. I'm not super light, but I'm pretty light on that roller. I'll go do those edges one final time 
And that's it. I'm not going to roll it again. Okay, some pro tips and recap. Remember, it's 78 degrees in my shop. I don't want to keep working the surface. I've got everything saturated. I applied plenty of material so I don't have dry spots. I went ahead and removed as much of that as I could with the wet roller after I applied it. Then I went one pass with the dry roller and because I applied the correct amount and I'm not trying to force it in the surface, it's going to lay out really evenly. Right now, because it's not dry, I'm seeing a few lap lines. Those are gonna dissipate as it dries. It could be tempting to come in here and try to remove those lap lines. Don't do it. Let it dry, get your process down. Practice on a project that isn't professional. It's not something you're installing into somebody's house. Practice on something till you get the top coat system down pat. It's really easy following the instructions in this video. Check this out, ultimate top coat tip of the day. How do we address a giant kitchen, a large project, a jumbo island to make sure that we apply this the right way? You wanna make sure that you don't get lap lines. And the key there is so that the material doesn't start to set up before you're done rolling. So if I had a giant island that I'm gonna roll the ultimate top coat on, I'm gonna break that up into theoretical sections. Let's talk about a four foot by two foot section. So I would probably do this island right here in this section. I'd roll it out in full, I'd do it wet, and then I would do it dry, and then I would start in this section, overlapping the section that I just finished. Because remember, that section still has drying time. This is fast drying, but it allows you to do sections on a jumbo project. What I wouldn't wanna do is start here wet, do the entire project wet, and then come back and start my dry rolling. Typically that would take too long and this would start to set up and you'd just be cementing in those lap lines. That's a pro tip, that's how you do this professionally. Let's talk about the other side of the coin when you have a tiny project. Let's say you just have a little piece that you're trying to apply the ultimate top coat to. You're probably gonna waste a little bit of material. Why? You wanna be sure that that roller is nice and saturated. If you're just trying to use a tiny amount, you might not get that roller fully enveloped in the ultimate top coat and as you're rolling it out, you'll be leaving more dry spots on that piece and then you'll be dry rolling it and as it dries, it will be uneven on that surface. So if you have a bunch of little pieces, wait till they're all ready for the ultimate top coat and do them as a batch so that you can not waste any. You have enough top coat to saturate your roller, dry roll, let it set up, and you're good to go. Let's recap. How did I prep this? I sanded with 220 grit, I wiped the dust, I mixed my material part A first, I mixed that in the container, then I went part B, two to one ratio, I added a touch of water at the end, I mixed it thoroughly for about two to three minutes, I applied it into my paint tray, I had two rollers, first a wet roller, second a dry roller. I designated those by marking them with masking tape. I applied a sloppy mess in the center of my piece and used that as my reservoir to feather that out into the entire project. I went ahead and used the wet roller to remove most of the mess and then I dry rolled it one time. It is hot in here at 78 degrees, so I don't wanna work the material longer than I need. That way nothing sets and then I go over that again and create a lap line that's not gonna level or tighten up, okay? That's a pro tip, that's how you do the ultimate top coat the right way every single time. Guys, what did you think of that tutorial? Luke, awesome job showing how to apply this. I hope that solves some of the, the clarity. I had some um, time to look at your comments during that. Uh, let me actually go over this comment here. This is from Katie Larson. She says, when I tried the ultimate top coat, I got a bumpy texture. How do I avoid that? Um, let me show you something, Katie. This is a, this is a pro tip. Um, check out how tight the surface is on this sample that we we rolled this out for a video that's coming out soon. A guy who'd never actually used any of these products before. This was his first pour and we applied the ultimate top coat to it. 
it's very, very tight. There's very, very little bumpiness to it. But I got to explain that. This is, this actually, it, everything glides on it really, really nice. And the texture feels like natural stone. But when you're going to get the ultimate top coat, part of the characteristics of that is you need microscopic bumps. And these are microscopic. These are tiny. If you got too many textured bumps, that means you're leaving too much material on the surface. Did you see in that video where I had a wet roller and a dry roller? That was important. I apply uh, a lot. I apply a good saturated amount so that I make sure I got coverage on everything. And then the rest of the rolling is basically to remove the excess. I know it's kind of contradictory, but that's okay. We're going to simply remove most of it with a dry roller. I learned this technique from a good buddy of mine named Paul Ricaldi. He's got a famous YouTube channel called Paul's Toolbox. He shows how to apply a painted finish to make it feel like you sprayed it with HVLP equipment. And this is where he used the dry roller technique. So I applied this to the different top coats that we were testing when we formulated this. And when we went, when we went through this process to bring, number one, we're looking for ease of use. We know that we're dealing with folks that haven't maybe sprayed lacquer on cabinets their whole life or don't know how to uh, prep a car and primer and bring it into color and top coat and 2K urethanes and spraying like a pro in a hazmat suit in a paint booth. We know that you're going to be doing this in your garage, your living room, in your personal shop, and you're going to need professional results every time. In fact, you can do this on site. There's no noxious fumes. This stuff is really fun to work with, really easy to work with. There's just a couple of tips. If you're getting too much texture, you need to do a better job dry rolling because we have a very hard time even picking up the texture when we're zoomed in with that HD camera. We actually tested that uh, to try to show you the texture and Luke's like, man, I, I can't really get it on camera. So uh, if you got too much bumps, that's the problem. The other problem Problem is trying to make the surface lap line free when it's still drying. That's not going to happen. You're going to be tempted to come in there and remove every lap line as it's wet. You're going to use that light. You're going to go, dang it, I still see where I rolled it. And you're going to come back and you're going to go, let me just feather it. You're, you're going to actually then hit the, the drying time too late and you're going to start leaving lap lines. You're going to be doing um, the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. You see, as we formulated this, um, the, the original formulation dried way too slow. Okay, so I had to let this stuff sit in the shop for a number of days before I could install it. And I told the uh, chemist, I said, look, man, it's, it's too long. Can we speed it up? And then they sped it up way too much where I had no time to even get it out. I said, nah, take it back a little bit. And we had this, this, you know, trial and error back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then we added additives to make things, um, actually scratch even less. And, and they got that so nailed, but then we had to adjust the curing. So it's back and forth, back and forth. And I've been looking for this answer for, for years, not just months, not just a year, for years, and we finally have it. I'm so excited about this particular formula. I'll be using this on every single one of my projects that I do with Platinum. Platinum is non-yellowing, okay? It's, it's fast drying, but it actually flexes so good with anything and everything. You don't want to call back because over an overhang, it cured too hard and it cracks over time but also you get a better bond with the top coat because it's not super, super hard with super, super hard trying to make a mechanical bond and bond that together. So the platinum is not as scratch resistant as it could be knowing that you're, gonna, you're never gonna get the platinum to be this scratch resistant by itself. So the two together is why it's a professional system. Um, it's absolutely what I'm saying it is. Try it out. Another thing you need to know about the platinum it's not going to lay out as good as our art coat or as good as our original SCC, the original big dog on campus. It's going to have kind of what I call a tight finish. It'll, it'll start to tighten up. There's no, there's no solvent, so it's not like dissipating those. But when you look at the surface, we got it to glass out the best we can, but it's still not quite as perfect. It reminds me of some of the other epoxy formulations that I test. It's just not perfect, perfect. But that's because I know I'm going to do a top coat. I'm going to sand it anyways. So I was more concerned with the non-yellowing. I was more concerned with the working time. I was more concerned with how, how fast can I get a job done on site with no smell, no yellowing. That was the key. And I had to settle for 
I mean, show this finish, Luke. So it's still extremely glassy, okay? It's extremely, it's extremely flat, but I am like, look at the light, guys. You can see that by following the light in, in the surface. See how he's scanning with that light? You see how it's just not perfect, perfect? Um, it's still really good. I'm just, I'm, I'm being totally transparent with you. That's, you know, this would fly as a, as a finish in a lot of people's home. But for me as a contractor, I want to make sure I get this thing where my customers can't believe it's not butter. I mean, can't believe it's not countered up uh, stone. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is go through that process. We just learned, um, there was some other really good questions on here. Uh, one of them, you brought it up, Luke. What was the question? Do you remember? Oh, can you hone? Oh. Yeah, so there's no need to hone this. So honing process is really good to make it look like uh, like this, like honed soap, soapstone instead of like this is a, a glossy version of our Black Galaxy. This is our honed soapstone, and, and we just knocked the sheen off. But if you look at the natural finish that you get uh, with the Ultimate Top Coat, check this out. So there's our unhoned, and that's not honed, but that's just the application of the top coat. And what that does is gives you a more of a natural unplasticky look, but you don't need to sand it like uh, you would if you're gonna hone it. So it actually expedites that process and you could do it in the customer's house with far less um, dust and stuff. You could also do this on wood, okay? So you can see we did this over this half of this wood river table sample and this half is left undone. And so you get that honed uh, look and you get durability that you wouldn't believe until you try this out. So the reason we're making this video is because we've had a few questions on the lap lines and um, that's because they're not quite following the system that we just taught and then that we're going to repeat right here at scale on a larger piece. Now remember there was a big pro tip in that and that's if you're doing a full kitchen don't like start in the middle roll it out roll over here roll over here and then come back and dry roll here. Start here, wet, 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 wet. Okay, I'll dry that. Now wet, 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 I'll dry roll that. You're gonna break it up into sections just like you saw in that video. And that what that does is, you know, this stuff dries really, really fast, but it allows you to move fast in your project. So, so keep that in mind. I, when you're first starting out, you know, do like a section this big, finish it then do the other half, this, this section. So I'll do that right now. Um, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, if you see some good questions, I really want this to be a teaching session. I, this is a live Q and A. So Chris, when you see questions that you think will really help the masses, would you mind um, letting me know? But, but when I get to, you know, when I get to the top coat, I need to work through it. I need to, I need to not stop and blab like I am right now. So I'll get that done. Why don't we do this? We'll get that done and then we'll have live Q and A for as long as people need questions answered. We'll sit here and support that and answer those questions. Totally. Does that sound good? Yeah. You guys like that plan? Let me know. Hey guys, where are you watching from? East coasters. We got some feedback that you wanted us to start a little later so you could get off work. Uh, we're still working over here on the West coast. So I hope, I hope you're enjoying this content. Hit that like button and subscribe. Ring the bell to get notified every time we have a new live training video. Because you guys have been doing that, it's day three and we're going. Here we go. Put the gloves on. Let's get started. Hey, Mike, I actually just saw a good question. Can you use the platinum over, uh, let's say, an art piece that you're going to use outside, maybe hang it on the wall, and not apply the top coat? Can you use the platinum on an art piece and what you mean by top coat is the clear, like we did yesterday. Is that is that what you meaning? Uh, meaning you can apply the platinum as a clear coat, and you don't. You're not required to use a top coat. Because oh, it's just art. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, of course, you know. So you don't need the top coat over the platinum for anything more than the the scratch resistance and the sheen level. So if you like the finish. By all means, keep it. If it's not going to have heavy objects sliding across it, it's hanging on the wall and it doesn't get foot traffic, no, you don't need this. Absolutely not. It's not going to yellow. It's going to stay what you see. If you want the added durability for countertops, man, I would, I would use the top coat every single time. Good question. Um, you know, artists till death, Thornton and Erica, they absolutely, uh, we, we collaborate all the time. We have conversations. We just talked about this is, is they see a need for the ultimate top coat in certain situations, but they absolutely see a need for the, for the 
for the, uh, the platinum to not yellow, but I also told him it depends on your additives. You cannot use yellowing additives and think that the platinum's gonna magically repair those additives. No, you gotta use a non-yellowing system, okay? So if you're trying new things and you don't know if that additive yellows, use rep reputable additives that you know are gonna stay color fast, okay? Um, and yes? Uh, along that note, it's recommended that if you're using platinum for, say, the clear coat, you also want to use it for the color coat, right? Yeah, good question. So a lot of people are asking, can I do my color coat with your epoxy, your art coat, your SCC original, and then can I use the platinum for the added non-yellowing, and then can I go from there? Yes, yes, you can do that. They're all compatible with one another because of this right here, a sander, a mechanical bond. I'm gonna sand this and I gotta get any of my products to stick to it mechanically. Um, problem with that is let's say you're doing a white piece. Well, yes, our art coat is the most non-yellowing up to this point and platinum beats it out. So if you want non-yellowing to the nth degree, you're gonna wanna go platinum, platinum. If you, if you, if you wanna go long working time and work that thing for crazy, crazy long working time, Go art coat, you're super safe, but this right here is exactly what we say it is not yet. It's non yellowing, man. It's, it's the bomb.com. That's what it is. So, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Those of you who've used art coat for years, you know, the, uh, uh, th it's the best formulation on the market. So keep using it. If you're a contractor that's worried about speed and time and, and uh, consistency like what we're talking about. I showed you what you can make with it the last two days. We made a white piece out there. That white piece is going outside in the sun. We're gonna leave it outside in the sun and it's gonna stay outside in the sun indefinitely over MDF. We get asked all the time, can I do MDF outside? Not a good idea, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna show you why or why, why it isn't. Okay, we're not even gonna red guard the bottom of it. Let's really, let's beat this thing to failure, see where it goes, all right? That's how we hillbilly test it out here in Oregon. All right, ready to mix? I think we are. You guys ready to mix? Guys, thanks for joining us. I got two rollers. These are one quarter inch nap rollers. I'm gonna put them on. This will be my wet roller. It doesn't have my candy cane stripe on it. This will be my dry roller. It's got my candy cane tape stripe on it right there. Makes me, can't wait for Christmas in July. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and de-lint these things. Man, I've been, I've been really enjoying um, going live. You know, you ask uh, Chris and Luke and Doc and Mitch and I might be frustrating you guys because I'm like, all right, did they do it? Yep, they subscribe. Okay, let's go. And so they don't know what we're doing that day. They're doing their thing. And I throw curveballs at everybody. And I don't know how you guys always pull it off. How you pull it off, Luke? We pull it off with stuff that we kind of talk about. <laughs> now you sound like the Truman Show. <laughs> All right. So. Look, that's kind of fun, man. It's like. So another thing on these rollers, when you reuse these things, it'll get build up right here, kind of at the crook of the roller. So if you push it too tight right there and, and you jam it, it won't, it won't want to roll really nice. Okay. Another thing that I've seen is some people are using like a foam roller. They're using um, different types of rollers. This is just a quarter inch nap roller, but I talked to um, a roller manufacturing company and I tested out a few rollers. Uh, they're not in here anymore, but I only had a few of them, but uh, we're gonna start um, buying those in bulk so that we get, um, there's no question at what roller we're using. It's, you can get these at Home Depot. That's where I bought these, no big deal, but uh, we'll get you a better price and probably a little better quality. Um, and, and then you'll know you're using what we use on the video too. So uh, it, it is important what kind of roller you're using. If, you, if you're using foam, you're not gonna like it. Um, okay, this is my dry roller. And I pro I'm probably overkilling it here, but I'm talking to you, so I probably would move. Do I move faster usually when I'm not on video, Luke? Uh, when you're not on video, a little bit faster. But I was in thongs before we started the video, and so I probably was walking slower. I got my, look at this, this is my, these are my uh, these are my shoes. I got these shoes so that I can um, 
they actually they're really cool so you can you don't they, they move down like this i don't recommend them because they don't they're not as cool as they were in the ad that i watched but you don't need to tie them you just slip them on and it's pretty cool man <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm not wearing socks so they're probably nasty i had thongs on man it's summertime it's hot outside hope you guys are enjoying this all right tape check sanding time I'll put these aside. Now, don't go set these in yucky, okay? I got a six inch paint tray here. Make sure, see this, check this out. See how that's hitting right there? So I can't back roll, I gotta go a little tighter. See how now it's, now it's barely wide enough, but you wanna be tight enough on that crotch that you'll be able to back roll this on the bumps because if it's too far out, it doesn't want to fit in the roller cage. So prep all this stuff before you actually mix your material. Why do you want to get this ready? You don't have a long pot life in this either. It, it dries fast and it acts funkier than anything that I've ever used as the end of the pot life comes near. See, this is the part, part A, the resin has the matting agent in it. And so I shake it up. Now, what I like about this is it stays suspended too. A lot of matting agents are heavy and they fall right to the bottom of your container. And the risk in that is inconsistency in your bottling. We've uh, already solved any of that problem. We actually agitate the material as we, did you see our bottling facility uh, and, and where we manufacture these? I'm gonna actually do a video where I, I go behind the scenes. I show you how we yellow test everything with our accelerated yellow machines. I mean, weather machines. I'm gonna show you how we, we package. Um, all of our facilities are, are right here in the United States. We employ people in Pennsylvania, Michigan, California, Oregon, um, um, Florida. We're all, all over the place and, and growing. Our company is exploding. And so the reason it is is because what we say about the products really works. Matting agent, shake it. Shake it before you bake it. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. And then this is your uh, hardener. Don't need to shake it. It's just, it's just no matting agent. It's just the hardener. It's a two to one ratio. So pro tip, if you want to know what the ratio is of something, look at the two bottles that we send you. We only have two ratios, a one to one and a two to one. Okay. Two to one, big bottle, small bottle, two to one, big bottle, small bottle, uh, quick coat. One to one, same size. Stone coat, art coat, one to one, same size. Supercast, two to one, big bottle, small bottle. Easy to remember, the bigger bottle, two, pour that one first, smaller bottle, one, pour that one second. Use a container that has two to one on it. Or you gotta be really advanced, you gotta have like a, at least a fifth grade education to figure out what two to one is. I need the ratio marked for me, I failed that part. So, two to one. All right. Uh, have, you tried, uh, have you tried foam rollers? Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like foam rollers. I wish they worked. They, they suck. Don't use them. Okay. Yep. Yep, they're not good. Um, try it. Tell me, but I already did. I tried the black ones. I tried the white ones. I tried uh, every, every roller that you ha could ever imagine. I, I've tried with every top coat formulation that we were coming up with. Um, we actually, uh, we actually subcontracted out and looked for um, top coats through other industries like the automotive industry and, 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 and stuff like that, ceramic top coats. We tried uh, every, every avenue and the problem is, is either it's not food safe, it's super toxic, the smell's gonna mess up with your customers, they're gonna be really mad for a number of days while it sets up or, um, it, 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 you know, Okay, the texture. Without that micro bumpiness that we talked about earlier, you, when you slide something on the surface, you wanna make sure that it's, it's not digging in, it, 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 it glides across, and that micro texture from applying it with the roller allows things like, for instance, like this is, so you could, it's super easy to slide this until it hits the normal epoxy, it still slides good, but not as free and loose. And so you, you, you're gonna, you know, even if you sand and polish this top coat, you're gonna, you're gonna make it less scratch resistant because 
you're making everything on the same plane. And we're talking a microscopic level. When I look at my jobs applied with the ultimate top coat, the, the light is even. They look very uniform. In fact, they hide imperfections. It's really a forgiving thing. So when we solve um, any of your questions today, hopefully this translates tomorrow for you that you get the same results I'm talking about. Um, all right. I'm talking too much yet again. These lives, man, they prove why our editing is so necessary because I, I don't shut up. So if you do come to a class of mine, be prepared to hear a lot of talking, but we do play a lot. Like what I do like is we have like, check this out. We don't play with little bit like we got. Oh, we got buckets. We got lots of buckets, lots of drums, lots of play, man. We could test and try anything. That's what I love, man. We like we don't play when it comes to learning new stuff. We 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 don't we are not afraid to fail. And that that kind of helps you right now is is because I bought every single roller skin known to man, I know which one applies this best. Because we get paid to test and try these things over and over and over again before we tell you about it. We, we know what's best, so, so hopefully that translates in, into you testing what we say, and it does what we say it does. Okay, I'm gonna sand this. I'm gonna sand the edges first, and I'm gonna create that mechanical bond. Okay, this is my clear coat that I applied yesterday, and all I'm doing is just roughing that texture up a little bit so that my ultimate top coat will adhere. Now, our, our series that we're putting together right now that Doc is working on in the back, Man, that cord isn't far enough to go see Doc, is it, Luke? I uh, know. So um, that series is is all about this process for a beginner using um, the the uh, the systems that we've taught for years. But we're trying to solve um, any confusion that people may have if they've never heard about stone coat before and they want to know everything. That's what this series is is trying to convey is. Here's what you need to know to have a successful project. So um, Doc is teaching right now about how to sand before the clear coat and we have a rock face edge. So if this was a rock face edge, I would not be um, pushing too hard because you got basically a fulcrum. You got little high points and those little mountains are gonna be concentrated when you sand them and you could sand the color right off of them if you go too aggressive. So use, um, use sandpaper by hand you don't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to cover like every little every little aspect evenly, but you do want to get it deglossed. You want to take away the shine. So I'm going to do that on the surface here too. Random orbital sander, 220 grit, five inch. Doesn't matter if you use a six inch. Doesn't matter if you use a seven inch. These pads are cheaper. These machines are cheaper. I use a five inch random orbital. I thought about something when I was sanding this. Oh, there's a little bit of glossy right here. See this, Luke? 
how it's just kind of under sanded. I'm just gonna sand that real quick. So guys, what's cool about this step? What's cool about this step is, let's say I had a mountain in the surface from yesterday, like a little peak. I had some chunks in the video I did yesterday because I had coagulated spray paint that we didn't um, we didn't shake the the can enough and it, it left some chunks that actually turned out to look like chunks of quartz in there, which was a happy accident. That's why we, you know, we just go with the flow, man. And we picked out the ones we didn't like. We left the ones in there, but uh, inevitably you're going to have imperfections. Okay. And this sanding right now allows me to get out any imperfection that I see where I get it just really, really flat, really perfect. I get to kind of see with my hands. Okay. Right now, I can see with my hands. I'm, I'm, this is what your customer's gonna do is they wanna know how flat is that surface. The flatter that you get this surface, the more professional that your job is gonna feel. Right here, there's a little bit of a dip right here. So I'm gonna sand that a little bit longer right here. <laughs> There we go. I like that. So now I'm flat. I feel good. I'm full of dust. Okay. How am I going to get rid of that dust? Oh, wait, I was talking about my conversation with Rhonda. Did I bring that up? Okay. So I talked to Rhonda, my friend last night. She has a YouTube channel called, um, RK three designs. Uh, she, she loves our products. She's a faux finisher with a faux finishing background and her and her husband, Kenny, are now doing epoxy full time and they also teach on their YouTube channel what they learn with our products. They also teach um, classes. And so we were talking last night about, um, about the platinum. We were talking about uh, different subjects and, and, and we were both really excited about this product because of the speed, the consistency. Um, but one thing that she said is, is you got to, uh, you gotta get some. You gotta get some practice under your belt before you start doing these for for clients. Okay. One mistake that we have is people will jump the gun and they'll start doing these for clients after they watched a couple of videos. Guys, get become really really good at this before you charge money for it. That's what I would suggest. Do your own projects. Maybe do some craft projects. Maybe do some projects for your mom. It's my mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. We're celebrating that this week. And so I should go out and make them something with epoxy because I need more practice. So I don't know why I brought that up either. I'm just kind of rambling, wiping dust. Okay, got that dust. The majority of it is on these rags here, okay? Now also I got my rollers right here that I've already cleaned with and delinted with tape and I just blew dust all over them. So think about that. Where are you putting these in your shop? Are they right next to your sander? Okay, are you blowing dust on them? Now there wasn't a lot of dust that's airborne. This stuff has just been poured yesterday. It, 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 it's, you know, I should wear a mask. I should wear PPE. I should wear a Tyvek suit and and and, and put hazmat and stickers. At, no, I'm totally kidding. Just, just protect yourself. Wear your mask, wear your gloves, wear your eyes, wear your ears for ear protection of that sound and, uh, and be smart, be safe. Um, but I typically will hook this up to a vacuum when I'm on site. Um, I think we showed a clip of that in the video you just did, Luke. Potentially. I don't remember. Um, but when we're on site and we're going to sand, we, we tape, you know, they make attachments for these that hook up to a hose right to your vacuum. And I always lose those attachments. So I stick the hose right here and it's always bigger than this. And I, and I tape it, 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 you know, DIY hack, baby. That's what you're going to learn. Um, all right. So now I got most of the dust off. It's time to go with an acetone wipe. Okay. You can use alcohol. You can use acetone. You can go right on this with, without any of this done. But this is just one extra step to get most of the dust off. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about Rhonda. Um, Rhonda and I were talking about, she had uh, done the ultimate top coat and one of her pieces, it had uh, little nibs, a, a few sharp nibs and nubs sticking up. That's going to be because of two things. You probably didn't dry roll it tight enough or, or enough, you're, you're leaving a little too much on the surface, or maybe your dry roller has like a little chunk or something in it that it leaves behind. And then when it dries and you rub your hand on it, everything feels good except for maybe 
a little, a little, a little, a little point. Well, all that's going to come off through use. It's going to kind of wear off any of those high points. You're not going to know, know that. But if you want to remove and make this thing feel like silk, she told me that she used a worn out, I think she said like 3000 grit Aberlon that we sell and it, and it worked really good um, just to remove any of those high points. Um, maybe, uh, but I don't want to get rid of the bumps. So make sure if you sand this and hone it, y you don't want to go past that microscopic bump. You don't want to flatten everything out. It'll still be a more scratch resistant surface, but less than if you left that tiny, um, that tiny feel. Okay. And you know, we sell these in small kits. A little of this goes a very long way. It's going to do like 50 square feet. So test this, see if, if you like it. And, and, and all of my pieces that I show as my samples to my clients now, they're all done in the ultimate top coat because I'm not even giving people an option when I install this. I know I'm going to have less callbacks if I, if I top coat it. Okay. See that right there? Acetone white. See how fast that acetone goes away. Check that out. Just cleans that remaining. There's not a lot of dust on there, but anything left behind just giving it a nice, tight, clean finish. Nice. And for those who haven't seen this piece yet, we did do this live, what, two days ago? Yeah, day. I don't know, all the days blend together. Check it out, it's sick. You like it, Luke? Didn't you stay here all night the other night just looking at it because you loved it so much? I did. I had to get my sleeping bag. Yes. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. On top of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging myself a hole. Yes, you are. We're we're rewinding. All right. We are live. Edit that cut. Right. Re go. Okay. Um. I wanted to show something here, right here. So here's our. Uh, our um, pewter it's our pewter it's 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 alcohol and our metallic powder and then it's acetone see look at this see how there's it's separated and i i shake it and there's our metallic already mixed in that medium which is a, is, is the alcohol this one has acetone in it so this acetone one we did a test. We're getting asked because it's it's a little harder to find the 91% the, uh, isopropyl alcohol that we missed. So if you look at this section right here, uh, what we did is we, we sprayed some black spray paint and then we immediately shot some pewter and alcohol to make it look like rocks are embedded in that surface right there. I, I, I've been using that technique for years. It looks very realistic. I did it right here as well. Looks really cool. And then I also did it right here over some, some of the gold area. Okay. Now check this out. I get asked on this top coat too. I'm going to show you what the acetone did as opposed to the alcohol, but hang on a second. Um, when I apply the ultimate top coat, people are asking, can I still see like the diamond dust? Can I still see the effects? Do I still see the vividness of the piece? This is, this is raw. This is what the ultimate top coat. Yes, you still see it. It's different. It's a lower sheen. I like the sheen. We, we played with the sheen level back and forth, back and forth. This sheen level hides everything. It's, it's, I can't say hides it. It hides doggone near everything. I love it. But it also guarantees success a lot more than a real, real high shine because a high shine, if, if you don't know how to spray with an HVLP, you're going to see lap lines. You're going to see imperfections. Have you ever like seen a car that was poorly prepped and sprayed uh, with a gloss black? You're going to see every error that you could possibly think as opposed to like a matte finish primer. It's going to hide everything. So same concept. You see really cool effects. However, sets you up for success. Now over here, this was done. It's a very tight finish. It almost looks like a, a speckled rock or, or like a, a very tight effect. It was the same exact effect as we did with the alcohol and the metallic, but we substituted it for acetone. So it doesn't give you this same pattern that the alcohol does. Acetone will be in my repertoire or my arsenal or my tool belt, 
when I want to make things look like that, when I want a wider aggregate look, I'm going to use the alcohol. So that's kind of the discovery of uh, necessities, the mother of invention. When you're trying to switch, now maybe I try denatured alcohol. Maybe I try, uh, you know, I don't really like to introduce a, a solvents. Like I don't, I don't want to go like xylene or I don't want to go MEK. I don't want to go, you know, crazy things like that. So alcohol is, is so nice because it dissipates so fast. Same with uh, acetone. Um, I'm not familiar with a lot of the other ones because I, you know, I've used a lot of lacquers and conversion varnishes, so I'm just using lacquer thinner. But that's about as hot as I get right there is is lacquer thinner. Um, but I have I, I don't recommend lacquer thinner or mineral spirits in, into the surface. Okay, um, where am I at, Luke? I think we're ready to mix. Shut up, Mike. Just pour. Okay, I hear you guys behind the camera, Mike. We've heard enough. Okay, if you've heard enough. Watch our edited videos. <laughs> if now you know why we edit videos, because this is too boring, doggone it. But I'm having fun. All right, I'm gonna get prepped. I'm gonna move these bottles. Um, Chris, I could take a question right before we go here. Let's see. Would the would the top coat bond to a surface owned up to three thousand or even four thousand grit? Great question. Would the top coat bond? To anything honed up to three or four thousand grit, I would not do that. No, why? The top coat has additives in this top coat that are designed to make things not stick. They're also designed to make things glide and slide. They're slippery, easy to clean, easy to maintain, very, very stain resistant. By nature, you have to have a mechanical bond. You have to have the scratches. Now this doesn't look all scratched up. I sanded it with the random orbital, but in fact, it's 220 grit. If you look at this under a microscope versus a 3000 grit, you're gonna see Grand Canyon craters versus ripples in the ocean, okay? So no, sand to 220, don't go higher than that. Don't overcomplicate it. If I have imperfect scratching, like you saw, I went two directions. Did you pick that up? I went this way and I went this way and I finished long ways because the, the theme of the grain of this piece kind of goes this way, it flows, it's, it's like all over, but, but really this is your focal, is right here, boom, it's flowing that way. So I'm gonna finish that way with my sanding. If it flowed that way, I'm gonna kind of feather my sanding, go that way. Now, you don't have to do that. I actually tested like, the, the perpendicular. I'm going to go opposite of the grain flow. Can I see it? Does it transfer through when I only sand with 220? No, it doesn't. But just by nature of a habit, it's kind of what I do. I also, by nature of a habit, usually feather out my colors and stuff that way. But I'll probably just finish this going perpendicular the short way. When I dry roll, you see, I don't want to, I don't want to do this whole thing and then dry roll this way. On like I probably I'm lying okay I probably would do that on this piece because I'm gonna get it done really fast I've done a lot of this now I'm pretty fast at it but if you're brand new section so I'll, I'll just do it like I want you to do it but when let's be real like when you're fast and you could slop it on and do this would be no problem and then maybe finish the whole thing boom and if you can't reach the whole thing get one of these and now you can reach way out wow uh, we did a shower wall the shower wall was six foot by seven foot and we did it with a six inch weenie roller on that cage it was really cool all right here we go we're just going to use the little ones good question did i answer the question chris i, think so. I don't have any monsters today I'm, my wife told me mike stop drinking so much caffeine i she thinks that I'm different when I drink more caffeine than less. And she's like, let's test it. Let's see if you're calmer and you're, you're easier to like sit still. Cause I have squirrel syndrome. I'm all over the place. She's like, can we, she got me a V8. She's like, this will give you energy. And I was like, okay, all right. So what do you guys recommend? Do you guys recommend stopping energy drinks or how, how do you stay energized? How do you stay energized, Luke? <laughs> How about you, Chris? I don't see you drink a lot of energy drinks, bro. What are you doing? Uh, I used Is that why you sleep at work a lot? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know that? <laughs> so, what do you recommend, Chris? Oh, for drinking? Not drinking, for staying energized, man. I don't want to hear about your drinking. Music. Oh, 
Music. Energizing music. Energizing. Yeah. New music, too. <laughs> Discover new music. Stone Cold Countertops. Epoxy your brain. That'll wake you up. Yeah. So don't keep reusing the same rag, okay? Don't use that rag over and over again. Oh, you like that? You like that? All right. That's almost as cool as the top coat. Okay, so I don't want to set these down on my dusty surface, so I'm going to give myself a little, little nice little clean area right there. Do you guys remember what that signifies? Dry roll, wet roll. All right, top coat time. Shake it before you bake it. Oh, water. Water. I add a touch of water. You saw me add a little cap full. Um, we're very, we're very serious about what we write on the bottles as far as the directions. And um, we, we spend a lot of time on doing that with the chemists and making sure it's all right. And, and I gotta be honest with you, I, I break those rules sometimes. So if I break the rules in a video, don't do what I do, do what they say. No, I mean, in so much as understand that I don't really measure this part out, the water part. It depends on how hot it is. It depends on how thin I want the material. It depends on how big I'm going. I don't even measure it. I just add a little bit. It thins up the material a little bit. Where this is pretty thick. It's, it's like glue, okay, almost. And it thins it up. I roll it out. I think it gives it a tad bit of more time to stay open. And then once that water evaporates, so on a huge... A humid day. We had a question in the comments about humidity from Clara Lawrence. Clara Lawrence, man, I've been seeing your uh, your art. You use a lot of uh, cool art techniques. Holy cow, you have come so far. Doesn't she make like dragons and stuff? Like Clara is an artist uh, to die for, man. Ooh. She's artist till death. You. Like she, she's well, she's not artist till death, but she's huge in that community, and she's. Uh, Super awesome human. Like she came to the Artisan Summit. I met her there. Um, so if you're still watching, I saw you in the comments. Thank you, Clara. You asked about humidity. And um, yeah, because there's water in it. The humidity is going to affect how fast that dissipates. So we put in the video that we just edited. Don't like don't touch the surface for four hours. It's not dry to the touch for four hours. It could be much faster than that. But that's a pretty good insurance policy to not. You know what I did the other day? Should I confess what I did about touching it? I think you should. Okay. Where is it? It's right here. So this is the piece that we did for that video right here. Okay. Show, show how there's absolutely no zero, no lap lines. So here's the gloss side. Here's the top coat. Okay. Now... They saw, I just saw it, Luke, come back and show these little spots, these little glossy spots. Where are they? I think they're, where did I touch it? I saw it on film when you were just going over it. Come up here. I think it's around here. Let me find them. Oh, here they are right here. Okay. Can you come back now? Scan from like here. Okay. Where is it? They're right, they're right around here. There they are. Stop right there. Right. See that right there? See it? Yeah. See that glossy spot? Yeah. Okay. Let me tell them what I did. So I kept monitoring this because we actually, we, qual we quality control this um, by, by taking random batches off the shelf on every, every shipment that we get from either Michigan or Pomona or wherever, um, wherever we're, we're getting our, our particular shipment that week. And we tested this. And I wanted to make sure we didn't have any lap lines. So I come back. I just did that video. I taught you guys how to apply it. I'm looking. I go, man, that looks good. And I put my hand on it. It was like, it looked dry because it was totally no lap lines. And I was an idiot. And I touched the surface. So here we go. I got, I got finger smudges in the surface. So um, don't touch the surface. Wait a few hours. And then when you want to test it, touch the side, man and barely touch it, and if it's dry, you're good. But now that I did that, how do I fix it, okay? Um, all I would do would be sand this again with 220 and apply another coat, and, and you'll never see that. Um, now, let's say you have a seam and you're bringing two pieces together on site. I wouldn't apply the top coat 
until you apply that seam together and then top coat that section. You could do every other piece in the kitchen, but just where you seam them together, wait and apply that top coat as a virgin top coat. It hasn't been done yet. This would be second go around. I'd have to sand the top coat. Now that top coat, it, yes, you can apply a mechanical bond, but don't just do it raw over a, a dry top coat because nothing wants to stick to it. I'm telling you, man, it's like picture a Teflon pan. I just saw a new video about uh, these metal pans. Like it looked like a honeycomb shapes on them and nothing like they were using metal utensils in the pan. My wife would like take her shoe off and boomerang it at me if I did that to her mm -hmm. pans, you know, so so but I don't like th this is like that nonstick. It, it's really cool. Okay, um, if, you know what, I'll do a video, guys, where I'll just tape this off, sand it, and I'll apply it, and you, you won't see those fingerprints, but no lap lines, and all I did is dry roll this once, and that's what I'm going to do here today. Um, let's Eventually. go. Eventually. How long have we been live, Chris? <laughs> it's been, where is it? Uh, it's been an hour and five minutes now. An hour and five minutes, and I haven't done anything. And we got two bars on that. So I better hurry? How much time does that mean? That means we have half the time that we did. Oh, okay. There's four bars total? Yeah. Okay. We can go another hour before I start? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this has been, I think, I think this is, uh, you know, not a lot of people are going to watch this whole video. But those of you who are doing this as professionals, I hope you feel like this is real training. I hope, I hope you feel like, man, we, we're really giving you all the the information that you need so this is part a this is part a and this is pre shook up yes i already shook it i shake before i bake okay so check this out luke i got it um this is the two column okay right there see the two column yes I slide down and I went up to number two. I could go up to number three, but it, but then in the one column, I need to go up to number three. But since I went to the two column, I'm going to go to the two column. In the number one. Yes. Yes. See that? Copy. So that's how you do two to one. Or. Was there ounces on there? Yeah, or you go here to the ounces and do the math. But I like to go right here, two to one. So now I'm going to take this, part B, up up to the number two you ready yep make sure i'm right okay there we are and almost there and done yeah. okay now take a little bit of water Take it off my piece so I don't spill excess water. Okay, you ready? Boom. Just a, little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna get a stir stick. You don't need to use a drill. I would use a stir stick. You're not gonna mix a lot. If you got a big job, do this in multiple batches. As this material starts to set up, it acts different than when, it, 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 when it's fresh uh, within I don't know, 20 minutes or 15 minutes, it's gonna start to harden. It's gonna start to do weird things in the, in the container. Look at the uh, container over here as I mix this, guys. So right here is an excess container. This is what it looks like dry, okay? Look at that. So that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna turn white and hard and weird. It's like nothing you've used before. So don't, uh, don't use this. Once it starts to get weird, that's why practice makes perfect, but I'm not mixing a lot more than what I just did here. I'm gonna, if I'm gonna use that whole batch, break it up, man. Give yourself plenty of time. It takes a couple minutes to make another batch, no big deal. These are really inexpensive. They are not worth trying to do more than you need. Like these are way cheaper than a kit, you know, and these kits are, uh, you know, $49 to make your entire job extremely durable it's it adds like a dollar a square foot to your project not not bad when granite goes for 65 to 100 bucks a square foot 
So instead of $5 a square foot, your jobs will be $6 a square foot in material costs. That's pretty, that's pretty reasonable. Do you have any good questions, Chris? Uh, you actually just answered the one about the, uh, how many square feet. <laughs> oh, excellent. So. Yes, excellent. You know, conservatively too, like you could probably go further than that, but you're gonna see that I don't use all the material. I'm, I'm taking some of it off. So that's part of the application is you're gonna waste a little material. Don't worry about it. Everybody always asks me right now too, is uh, I say everybody, like I'm getting these questions a lot is how many square foot can I do before I switch dry rollers and I oversaturate the dry roller? Um, if that's the, uh, I you could do 50 square feet and not switch out your dry roller. I, I haven't pushed that dry roller to the max yet and, and had lap lines because of it. What's up, Chris? Uh, this is a question about the shelf life of, uh, let's see, I assume it's, uh yeah, yeah, it's three years ago, so I assume it's uh, the stone coat countertop epoxy. Um, so if it's been three years, how's the shelf life? Will that still work? Yeah, it'll still work. We tell people a year. I've, uh, I've used stuff that's much older than that. It, 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 if you have air in part B, it's going to start to yellow part B. But when you put it down on um, an eighth of an inch like we do, you don't see any of that. It's absolutely usable. Uh, use it. You'll love it. Okay, here we go. I mixed that up. Was that two minutes? Seemed like it. Felt, it felt like two minutes and 12 seconds. Okay. How long was that, Chris? Uh, two minutes, 13 seconds? Probably. <laughs> no, we're done, man. All right, here we go. Wet roller. I'm gonna fully saturate my roller, okay? I'm gonna get it in there, fully saturate that. Back roll it, I'm priming that roller. I got a good amount of material on there. I'm gonna roll that in the center, okay? Roll that in the center, I'm gonna get some more on there, okay? And you can go half and half, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm gonna roll that in the center. Now, I'm gonna cross hatch this and I'm gonna go with the edges. See how I'm going with the edges instead of over the edge? I'm gonna go with the edge so I don't run my roller off the piece and get it all dirty. Okay, you cannot run your roller off your piece and get it all dirty. Now I'm gonna do those edges. You can see the sense of urgency. I'm moving, I'm shaking, I'm baking. I'm not messing around. Okay, now I'm gonna dry roll all of this I can with, look at this, see how I didn't roll here? No, no, roll there. Get it all saturated. Now I'm gonna get most of it off with my roller. Okay, this is still my wet roller. I'm erasing a lot of the lap lines that I can with the wet roller. And then I'm gonna grab my dry roller right now. Okay, and I'm gonna dry roll that. Ready? Now look at how much it, 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 it tightens that up. Now this looks a little bit blue. It's got a blue hue to it. That's because it's a water-based coating. It's going to clear up. Don't worry. I can see lap lines right now as I look past my trail. I'm not gonna let that mess with me. I'm gonna leave it out alone and I'm going back to my wet roller. Now that this has got some coating on it, I don't wanna put that down on the doggone, I should have been prepped there. I don't wanna put this back on, um, the deck. Mike, what are you doing? How about I hold it? How about that right there? Boom. Now it's clean. Okay, here we go. You're the man. You offered to hold it. Luke, you're the man. Okay, right in the center. See how sloppy it is? Doesn't matter. Slop, slop, slop. That's my reservoir. I'm going to go out to my edges. Okay, go over here to my edge. Okay, I'm gonna go over here to my edge. Hey Chris, yeah. when we're done with this video, would you put a link in the bottom of the video where I actually shut up and start working so that they don't have to listen to that if they choose not to and they could go right to this part? Yeah, a little anchor. Yes, sir. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to start over here and feather back, okay? Now, okay, remember, all my weight is over here on the roller. It's over here. It's not here. I'm going back away, always away from this side of the roller. I've known this for a long time, but this is just good sound painting techniques. These transfer over to painting too, guys. If you're painting a wall, a surface, if you're doing your undercoat, anything like that, these techniques transfer. Okay, time to dry roll. Here we go. Now, because that's still got a little time left, feathering over that ain't gonna hurt anything. And I'm going a little further than I need to. That's where I'm light. Now I could add a little bit more pressure. Because I was feathering it in, fine. But now that it's still really fresh, I'm only doing four foot by two foot there. I'm going through here and just removing any excess material. This is why you won't get a heavily textured surface. This is why it's gonna tighten up. I'm gonna be lap line free. If I go through this right now, I can see lap lines. I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna come back and mess with it. I know that they're going to go away because I used the right roller. Look at how much I got left. Let's do a test, Luke. Okay. Remember this piece that I said, uh, I left fingerprints in? Yep. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come lay it on the ground over there. And I'm gonna roll this out. I'm not gonna sand. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a test. I'm gonna see how, um, <clears throat> how well this will bond if I break all the rules. Okay. Right, you roll over the edges also, as well as the top? I already did. On the dry roll? Here, I'll do that for you. But I, I don't like, my edges aren't nearly as important as the dry roll because you're not gonna see lap lines on the edges, guys. So I don't wanna risk messing up the top. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna saturate this, okay? And I'm just gonna do another coating on this. And I'm gonna come back and try to peel this. And we'll see how well that delaminates or bonds with absolute worst case scenario. You did not sand and uh, this is what you did. So let's see, let's see what this looks like. This is why, here, let me go this way. Don't get my butt there, Luke. Okay. This is what we do is we, we like to push things to failure. Where will this fail? Now I'm gonna come through and get as much of that off as we can. Still plenty of pot life in here, guys. It's acting exactly how it needs to right now. And then I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna dry roll. See this, how I didn't put my dry roller down? That's what I should have done right there. Easy. Okay, remove the lap lines. Here we go. Oh, look, man, what a difference. What a difference. Q&A, Chris. Let's hear any questions that are still going on. Look at that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back, we'll report. So subscribe, ring the bell so you know what the results is that gonna be? Is that gonna be in your way, Luke? No, I'm good. Okay. Let's go Let's go over some Q&A, Chris. Can, can they hear, guys, can you hear Chris? Or do I need to repeat the question? I would repeat the question. Probably be safe to repeat it. Okay. Uh, so, um, so regarding the, uh, the natural finish, uh, what if people still want the shiny finish? Can they get that with the ultimate top coat? Good question. Um, no, you're not going to get this original finish. You're going to get more of a natural look. If you want a shiny, shiny finish, we're working on some alternatives for that. And I'm not happy with any of them at this point, but I have some promising ideas. Um, but at this point, this is, this will be the, the, the sheen that, uh, this is the only sheen in this particular product. I have other sheens that I'm just not happy with and you wouldn't be either. You're going to, they're much harder to apply. So no, this is it for the ultimate top coat. Uh, for rough edges, like the, uh, the special um, rock face edge, uh, uh, does the top coat work for that? Uh, great question. Does the top coat work on rock face edge? Absolutely. I do rock face edge on every finished piece that I install for my customers. 
to a different degree. Sometimes it's a heavy, sometimes it's an in and out, uh, uh, you know, accentuated chisel. Sometimes it's a slate finish. I got different edges for different, uh, different strokes for different folks, you know? And so what I do like is, is I don't like the smooth edge in case, um, I have to come back and in, in a few years and, and they got a chip out of an edge or something as a contractor. I know that this edge looks good, but but man, the rock face edge sets me apart. It's my brand. It's like, do you want stone coat countertops? It's a piece of stone. It looks like it's coated with stone. That's the whole point. So that's my brand. Plus it's so doggone forgiving. I know that I can go over existing tile. I could pop that front edge off. I can add a little strip. I can rock face it and I'm going and blowing, you know? So yes, I rock face everything and I use a top coat on it now. This is probably a, a contractor preference, but uh, would you prefer to roll on the top coat and then trim and seam on site? Or would you trim and seam on site and then roll on the top coat? Would you prefer to trim and seam? What do you think trim means in that? Well, oh, I like mean, trim it to size, cut it to right. size. Oh, I template it. Okay, so guys, I'm going to, is this okay? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, so yeah. so I, I will uh, template everything. So I go there's cabinets there. I'll template it. I'll make sure it's going to fit because no drywall is square. It's all going to be out of square. It's going to go in and out where the, the window pop-ins are. And to transfer those measurements to my, to my shop, I template it with our template material. If I'm going to go on site, it doesn't matter. You're going to prep it all off and pour in place. So I like to do it right when I pour, except for where it's very hard to template or where I'm nervous. If I'm nervous and I think I may have templated it wrong, I'll grow that piece and I'll cut it on site. When I did the shower walls, I templated the back wall and, and then I grew everything else and cut it on site um, because it was easier for me to grow it and then um, trim it than it was to template vertical. So um, it, it's, it's honestly a preference. Right, right. Yeah, that question was regarding templating, right? Yeah. Okay. Any other Q&A that we can go over? Let's see here. I'll come back here and look with you. Where are the, where are the questions? Oh, I see right here. Here's about um, whether you would remove uh, the sink before applying um, epoxy or the top coat. Uh -huh. Or would you just tape it off? Oh, good question. So I've got videos on both, but as a pro, I'm going to take that sink out every day of the week. I'm going to usually ins uh, help them get a new sink. Um, if you're doing new countertops, most of the time you're getting a new sink, but we have people who are DIYers that have a great sink and they don't know how to plumb. So they tape off the edge of the sink. They pour, they pull the tape before it cures and locks that tape in and they're happy with that. But if you ever have to change out your sink, you're going to have to use a multi-tool and cut through that epoxy to release the lip of that sink. Right. If you're doing an undermount sink in place, you mask off that sink. Use Tyvek tape. It bonds to the stainless steel or the Collier uh, enamel on the on the cast iron sinks a lot better than a painter's tape will. And uh, the, it gives you a little more forgiveness when you try to peel a sink out that uh, the, the epoxy won't stick to the Tyvek. And use 3 mil plastic. And watch out for your torch. When you're torching around an undermount sink that you have prepped, it will melt through that plastic because it's, it's not deflecting like it is vertical on a cabinet. You're, you kind of give it direct heat. You'll burn through the plastic. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, we did a carbon fiber t uh, table. Yes. Would you use the top coat on that? Uh, With the natural sheen, right? Yeah. So I mean, that work? heck yeah. I mean, have you ever seen a low sheen uh oh, flat yeah, black yeah. car or you something like that. yeah it's sick the man yeah i mean yeah, you totally. can do both you can do both it depends on the wear you're going to give it you know i'm going to take that carbon fiber table that we did i'm going to drill holes in it for recessed lighting i'm going to put some chain on it or some like metal all thread rod and make it into a ceiling light fixture in your guys's editing there room like that that's that's my plan so it doesn't need a matte finish it's not going to have anything sliding on it but uh, it, I think that'd be a cool element, you that know? That would be really, that'd be pretty cool, yeah. 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 Let's see what else we got here. Guys, have you pressed the like button? If you're this far along in the video and you haven't pressed the like button, I'm, I'm sad at you. That's what my four-year-old says. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad at you, Daddy. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, um, regarding, like... Um, Top conditions for like atmospheric conditions for pouring the platinum coat. Um, so 
Uh, Got this guy named Scott who's a chemist. Let me ask him. Hold on. Scott, what is the ideal atmos- at How do you say that? Atmospheric conditions. Atmospheric. Like uh, yeah, atmospheric. Man, those are big words. Okay, Chris. Uh, atmospheric conditions. What's the ideal? Oh, Scott has a really long answer for that. That's all technical. Uh, and I'm a hillbilly chemist. So I would say when it's humid and cold, it dries slower. When it's hotter, pistol shooting hot, it dries faster. Oh, I have a way to answer this. So I, I paint, I've painted a lot of houses with a uh, airless sprayer. Okay. You know what happens when you paint gutters at the end of the day in the fall? No. The dew point hits. You come back the next day. The house looks good because it's stucco, it's wood, and then the gutters are metal, and the dew point actually makes all the paint fall right off that metal gutter because you didn't have enough time before the moisture overcame that latex paint. Right. So ideal conditions would be 75 degrees, no breeze in your shop, no direct sunlight, um, no air movement, no dust. But we exceed those all the time. We go cold, we go hot, and it still works. So it's, it's, it's not that temperamental. Like it doesn't need to be that overcomplicated, but know that if it's hotter, you got less time. If it's colder, you got more time. If it's wetter outside, you got more time. What does that mean? I hope I didn't come across arrogant, guys. I love you. Think, keep asking the questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. We're back here reading them. Boy, Hit that like button. I I am ugly, Chris. I'm looking at the, the playback <laughs> here. Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> awful, man. I need to I need to I need to shave. My wife's like, you need to shave. I'm like, honey, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even wearing socks. We're here for the pro tips. Yes. <laughs> All right. Digress, 98% humidity. Oh, degrees, 98%. Oh, man. Uh, we've done videos over natural stone, right? Over, over. Uh, you know, we, we've done over concrete. Yeah, you can go over concrete. You can go over uh, laminate. That's the most popular people. Can I go over my old laminate countertops? Can I go over my tile countertops? Can I go over solid surface, cultured marble, natural stone, slate, concrete? Can I go over wood? Can I go over plywood? Can I go over particle board? Can I go over, oh, yes, to all of them. Yeah. And if here's the key, porous versus non-porous. Porous surface, you don't need bonding primer. Non-porous surface, you need bonding primer. That's the main difference, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, whenever we make a video going over some material, we'll put the name of that material usually in the title. Yeah. So that you know, and you can search on YouTube, stone coat over tile, yes. over laminate, over yes. quartz, yes. whatever. Yes. And chances are we've done a video on it. If we haven't, then hit us up and, and we can do that. Let's go check this out. I want to see how this is looking. Let me move this, Luke. Let's see if it hid the fingerprint first. Ugh. I don't see them. They were like, they were like right here. I don't see them. Well, we'll see tomorrow. I see some lap lines, guys. Oh no, there's lap lines. Ah! No, don't freak out. Don't panic. Wait for four hours and then panic. If you see them in four hours, you should panic. Oh man, I don't see them at all on this. Let's see if the camera sees. Holy cow. I'm using the light on this entire thing. You know, that's a key right here where I see where I spliced it. So I didn't think about telling you this, but where I where I overlapped it and I and I dry rolled, I feathered out and I got lighter, like lighter to the touch and don't don't be like geometric, kind of feather it like like a plane. If you got a plane coming in to land, it's going to come down. It's not going to like land. Boom. You're going to touch down and glide. So kind of feather that out where those two meet. Other than that, don't freak out about being that. So maybe that's where the best technique is, is where you join that seam, feather it out further than you think you need to. But, but if I, if I feathered that out and then I had another, another spot to feather out here, I would never want to come back and do it again to try to erase it even more. Just, you got one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. <laughs> right? All right, any more questions, Chris? Well, 
Oh, we got more. Let's go. We still got a lot of people watching. There is a lot of people live right now. Oh. How's, uh, how's the shower in the river house? The awesome foam shower, the amazing foam shower. I'll tell you a story about that shower, man. Go ahead. So I, I go, I go see my mom and dad at their river house all the time. Um, whew, I don't know if I want to go here. I'm going to skip that part because that's personal. And I'm going to go to this part because I don't want to cry right now. Um, the shower is fantastic, but there was a big colossal error. When the shower doors were installed, I had that uh, that plastic, right? I, 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 I embedded PVC boards. If you haven't seen our shower video where we, we turned foam, we had foam just like this, but giant sheets of it. We took insulation foam and we turned it into shower walls, okay? So they were thick, they looked like giant pieces of stone. Chris, can you cue that up so we could just show them quickly kind of what that looked like? Um, the, the video, just the video, the hook part of it is fine. Um, so anyways, I go over there and, and I had embedded, because if you're gonna install the 3 8 thick frameless shower doors, those things weigh a ton. They're, they're solid glass, they're really heavy. Well, you wouldn't wanna like screw through foam and try to attach a heavy door the hinge is going to grab that stud and and collapse the foam so i needed some structural insert there and so i didn't want to use anything that would be affected by water or moisture that's the whole point was using foam let's let's figure out a system that is a hundred percent impervious to water the foam we embedded pvc boards that we mechanically and then uh, embedded with epoxy it worked really good however the screws going through the hinge didn't actually grab the stud because the guy who installed the doors, he used screws that typically go through 3 8 inch thick tile into your stud. And so they, they, they only penetrated the stud just, just barely. And, and so it, it worked for like a day or two when he installed it. And then I went back to visit my, my mom and dad a few days after that and if you looked at the wall right here, the top of that foam was like this, hanging out of the wall. That doggone shower door was fully supported by a piece of foam and PVC board, not into the stud. So, so the moral of that story is, on your shower walls, be sure, this is common practice in construction, you need to put backing behind the sheetrock that you actually screw into. Like if you're gonna do um, like a big TV or something like that, you gotta put backing, anything heavy behind sheetrock, put your backing so you grab a stud, structural. Well, it missed it, it was, it was flowing out. So I went in and I took out one screw at a time and I embedded a much longer screw. It sucked it right back to the wall. Shower doors look good. The shower looks absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. I'll, I'm happy to go do a video over there if you guys don't believe me. And my mom loves it. My dad loves it. Everybody who goes over there can't believe it's not butter. I mean, can't believe it's not stone. So yeah, it's cool. P pull that up and just show them a quick preview of those foam shower walls. Sure. Can they, can they hear the uh, footage, Chris, or is it me? Okay, so yeah, those, we made those out of foam. We used our uh, rolls of fiberglass. We did a, a window cutout in those. We also uh, did a couple of different exotic pours to do like a light and a, and a dark version. And then um, we also made our own trim. We used um, sand and our quick coat with a mold that we made and we made our own window trim and future tile trim. We did a, uh, a custom shower pan on the river house. We used river pebbles. We floated that. My mom was absolutely shocked. We turned a cinder block house into a log home and we did it from scratch for YouTube, for you guys. There's those shower doors. There's the foam. Uh, we added all of our additives. We did everything you saw in these past few days, but we just did it for a shower. Stay tuned. Oh, wait, oh, I was doing the hook. Sorry about that. All right, guys. So uh, go check out that video. Um, Chris, don't show them any more else. They won't go watch it. <laughs> so uh, guys, go check that video out to learn how to do the same process over shower rolls. We did the ultimate top coat over that too. We did the ultimate top coat over their counters. And, and we did this, this table as an island for them. And we're gonna go back. My mom loves the Ultimate Top Coat so much, she wants it on 
her island as well. So we tested it, we showed her, she loves it. We're gonna go back and do that to that color changing LED. I mean, if you haven't seen our other videos, guys, you wanna learn a trade, go watch Stone Coat Countertops. You're gonna learn showers, floors, countertops. We did, we got a, we got a video coming out, Chris, about windowsills. He's editing that right now. Basically, we made the windows look so high end. We, we took that cinder block walls. It, it was already a cinder block depth, which is deep. We added logs to it. We added sheetrock to the inside because it was cinder block. We made those walls over 12 inches deep. So the window had deep window sills and we did all of those using stone coat. And they're basically miniature seats now. It's, it's really cool. But what, what I'm, I'm, I'm remodeling another house right now and I love that look so much. We're actually not even gonna trim out the windows. We're gonna sheetrock those with square corners and just do stone coat window sills because it's so fresh and clean and crisp. Uh, I love it. So window sills video, when's that gonna be done, Chris? Uh, well, uh, actually, you gotta watch that and uh, tell me what you think about it. Do you have um, the hook prepped on that? Yeah. Let's check it out. Pull it up, man. You guys are getting previews right now. You got to pull up the audio, though. Let me, um, yeah, I can do that. All right. All right, so so check this out. Look at what Chris is doing back here. So you got, you got all kinds of stuff. Why are you in the dumpster right here, man? Oh, that was Doc. He, uh, he was throwing away some computer parts, and I, I'm like, I'm going dumpster diving if it saves me. He money. threw away some computer parts. Where was I that day? Like, So when I leave, you guys just start tossing computer parts. You see what I deal with here, guys? <laughs> Let me see here. So we're going to show you guys the hook of this windowsill video coming out. It is... Uh, how many bars we got left, Luke? We have one, but we're okay right now. <laughs> All right, we're almost, we better wrap it up they're, soon. They're good batteries. Yes. Okay, yeah, this should be it. Are you able to play the audio so they can hear it? And this uh, doesn't yeah. have any voiceover or anything on that. It's just it's just gonna show kind of a preview of what's to come there. Yeah, do you All want right. me to put your voice over it? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'll talk during it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, so I'll get your voice here. Boy, I really put you on the spot. I don't know how you do any of this technically. We're live right now. You're bringing, like, I don't know how you do this, it's man. A good, it's a good challenge. It is? I'll just have to switch it back afterwards. So Okay. So I shouldn't be back okay. here. I should go up there and watch the monitor, or should I watch it here? Uh, you sh uh, it'll be both places. Okay. So you go ahead and film this. So this is, making oh, wait, you'll want to film this screen so they could see kind of a bigger screen of this, and, and I'll just commentate here. How's that sound? Or can you do that? All right, fingers crossed here. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that, yeah, we made those out of MDF. You guys have That's, never used. So the contractors who, who helped me on this project had never used right. our product yeah. before. They were all kind of nervous. We did a rock face edge on it. And by the time we were done making these sills, oh my gosh, they loved it. And they were so proud of the ones that, you know, they made, they were all competing to who, who makes the cooler one. And so I had, I had my new friends. Uh, we, this was one of our first major projects together and and they had, they, they had a color recipe. They got to make them however they wanted. A lot of these were their very first time ever, ever touching epoxy. And they came out cool. Then we also did what we just taught here is the ultimate top coat on each and every one of those window sills. It dried really, really nice. Um, what, a, what a beautiful look. Um, happy with this, man. And I have not seen this hook yet, Chris, and you did a really good job on this editing holy cow thank you stay tuned enjoy the video subscribe and ring the bell to get notified every time we have a new video thanks again all right uh last question i'll tell i'll tell you what whoever you pick for this last question chris we're sending them a free kit of the ultimate top coat because they stuck around this long and watched our video if you're watching the replay you you don't win. So don't don't like don't don't get mad. You didn't win. But if you're on the live right now and you pick the last I'm going to come pick the last No, you pick it, Chris. You pick the last question. Whoever wins, we're sending you an ultimate top coat and most likely we'll throw some other stuff in that box so that you're really stoked on it, all right? Um All right. So while you pick that, Chris, guys, I just want to say thank you for uh for your support. You know, we're an epoxy company and 
you know, I, I've never felt like an epoxy company. I'm a contractor, a blue collar guy who's grown up in the trenches doing these things, scratching out a living for me and my, my wife and four children. Uh, my dad works with us. My mom works with us. My brother works with us. Um, my kids were our original shipping department. Um, I've surrounded myself with my friends and family who we've all built this thing together from scratch. And so um, we kind of went a direction the other day and we said, look, man, People didn't start out supporting our company because we were, um, you know, the most professional website or we didn't have um, the most professional video content. Uh, we, we certainly weren't uh, easy on the eyes. We're all kind of slightly overweight and slightly ugly, and that's okay. You, you supported us because we truly have a desire to um, grow this business through educate, educating people on how to use our product, and we cross our fingers and hope that you support us and, and, and buy it again and do another project. And so we appreciate you sticking this long. I sincerely um, love what I do. These, these videos we've done the last three days live, I've kind of let my hair down, whatever's left of it. I've let my hair down and um, you've, seen, you've seen what we do back here and, and we have a good time. And so that's really the pro tip of the day is have fun. Uh, do something that you love every day and of course you won't feel like it's work. Um, don't get too stressed out over any of this. It's, it's a glorified paint job. You don't, you don't, you don't need to think that it's any of this is, is unrepairable. You can always come back and do another coat. It might cost you a little bit of experience, a little bit of material, but I promise you, I've stuck with this for years now. I wanted to give up. I used to install these for customers and sometimes I couldn't repeat a color or I had an issue that I couldn't overcome. And, and in, in, in fact, all the samples that I made, um, I got so frustrated I put them in a pile outside of my shop. I don't tell the story um, very often. I put these samples, especially live, I can't rewind this, you know. I put them in a pile and I lit them on fire. I was so frustrated. I said, I will never do this again. And, uh, and, and, and then I did it again and then I burned my samples yet again. I, I, I beat my head against the wall trying to figure out the best formulation on planet Earth so that I could have consistency, so I could have durability. And my promise to you is that, and my team can attest to this, I'm never satisfied with status quo. We're always trying to push the envelope to the next level. How do we make these things more easily, easy to use, more durable, uh, better for every average Joe there is on planet Earth, and that's what we will continue to do, but doggone it, how far have we come in the last four years is insane since we sold that first two gallon kit. So thank you for your support. Let's get to that last question, Chris. Oh man. <laughs> Chris is nervous. Okay. You want me to pick it? Help me out. Okay. Let me go on there. All right. Next level. Mitch says, holy cow. It's already 442. For sure. Holy cow, I'm sorry, I've kept you guys late. Um, do you ship to Mexico? Um, we can, yep, that's not the question. Pick me for the kit, no question, Carlos. Uh, appreciate all the guidance, Mike. Hopefully, I can get an invite if you host a class. Who's this from? Cookie Monster? That's, uh, that, what's the question? Would love to come hang out with you. Do you plan on a sliced agate tutorial? <laughs> Mitch said, who's your favorite brother? Who's my favorite <laughs> brother? Um, I'd, have to think, I'd have to think about that one. <laughs> my favorite brother. Uh, can I come work for you? Susan, yeah, you probably can. We, we actually just scaled our customer service. Um, we were missing a huge percentage of calls because our call volume continues to climb every month. And right now we're answering about 90% of our phone calls. Congratulations, Jeff and the customer service team. Thank you. We're shipping every box out. Our goal is if you order by noon that day, our box goes out that day. And we are exceeding that goal right now. And we have never shipped this many boxes since day one. So we figured out how to scale. We've added to the team and we've done it despite the current conditions in, in the economy and trying to hire people. Um, we've done it because we've reached out to our community and we have a lot of people working um, from other states remotely on our customer service that already have proven they have um, Stone Coat experience. And so I hope that transfers in, in your any of your frustrations 
frustrations that you may have and, and questions. Plus, we're trying to go live to help relieve some of those uh, customer service questions so that we answer all of those for you. Do you ship to New Zealand? Golly, man, let me find one here. Uh, you know, Miami is 95 degrees. How much working time is there? Um, man, I don't know. I don't know how much working time. Not a lot. You got to go fast. Do you believe you could clear epoxy over plywood instead of, and install it in a shower? Yeah, you got to, uh, if you want to put epoxy on plywood and put it in a wet environment, you need to waterproof the backside of it. Use a waterproof membrane. That's not the question. Have you ever compared your epoxy to other brands in a sample? Of course we have. Um, have you tried a head-to-head -head contest with other projects? Of course we have. And um, I, don't, I don't ever go negative on other people's stuff. Uh, we try to just show you what we got and we try to be the best in the world. And scientifically we are and real world application we are. Uh, do you have a question? I, I think I have a good one. What is it, Luke? Um, by ICXC, what steps did you take to get your business where it's at today? And did YouTube help you with that? Oh, man, that, that's the winner. Okay, yep. we'll take that one. Um, can you read that again, Luke? Yep. Woo! Yep. What steps did you take to get your business to where it's at today? And did YouTube help with that? Um, excellent question. And and that is a that's a game changer question for you. Okay, so if that worked for me, if I were able to build my business off of YouTube, how does that relate to you? What, what's your business goals? What, what's your goals uh, with this product? What you, do you understand the window of opportunity that is open right now is unparalleled in history? Before you used to you used to have to buy a billboard. You you used to have to send out mailers. You you used to have to go you know door to door and 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 have a sales pitch that was rehearsed to perform one to one you know business to consumer you used to have to do ads in the newspaper and classifieds marketing is changed and the internet will call you a liar very quickly if you're a liar so a it helps the consumer because reviews are real Correct me if I'm wrong. If you buy anything on Amazon, what are you looking at? Number one, you're looking at price. Number two, you're looking at reviews. Reviews don't lie. It's a verified customer. You can go in and trust those in as much. Don't trust reviews on my website or anybody else's website. Go to Google reviews. We have uh, Google and Facebook. We have thousands of five-star reviews. Go check out our reviews on Amazon. Uh, how did YouTube help my business? It allowed me to get in front of not a local community, not a regional community, not a national community, a worldwide community. And I think YouTube's working on intergalactic right now. Like, honestly, it allows you get in front of the world. We have an uh, international distributor in Australia and Canada, uh, the UK. We have people working for us in the UK on customer service. We had somebody who just joined our team from the UK. And we're in Grants Pass, Oregon. You know what I mean? There's, there's like nobody in Grants Pass, Oregon. And here we are, a worldwide company. Yes, YouTube helped me. But, but with that comes license of authenticity. Okay, you have to be transparent, you have to tell the truth, you have to be authentic, and you have to be the best in the world. What do I mean by that? You guys would not care about what I'm telling you if it wasn't valuable information. Okay, if you're the best in the world at one little thing, just one little thing, you can be worldwide. If you're the best in your local community at one little thing, you're going to be well known in that local community for that one thing. You're going to be the go-to guy for windows if you're the best at installing windows. If you're the best at art in charcoal drawings in your community, you're going to do well in your community. If you're the best in the region, that region will will support you. If you're the best in the world at something, the sky's the limit and YouTube will help you tremendously. YouTube changed my life. I wrote a book about it. The book's right over here. Um, man, this was not fabricated, guys. I hope we don't run out of time. If we do, we'll have to save this for another one. Right here. I never show this book to anybody. I sell it on Amazon. I hate telling this story because I don't want to brag, okay? Um, boom. How I made a million, telling the truth on YouTube, right there. Yes, YouTube changed my life. And here was my goal originally. I knew because I went to home shows and other contractors saw my business and they wanted to know how I did what I did. And I hid it from them. I wouldn't tell them how I did what I did. I just landed 
job after job after job after job after job because I did one thing really, really well. And what I did was I did a home show that was interactive. I actually went live. I showed people what I, what I was doing. I didn't tell them where to get the product. I hid that. And I said, I could come do this for you for $29 a square foot. The products cost me five bucks a square foot. I made a really good margin and I was a better deal than anybody else in my local community. Every contractor wanted to know how I would do it. I, I wouldn't tell them. And then I finally put together a, a video system to kind of beta test it and they loved it. And I said, you know what, if it works locally, let me, let me just throw that out there to the world. Let's see what happens. But I did not bring this to market until I felt like I was the best in the world at it. I also didn't bring it to market until I knew how to answer the Q and A. So, so let me tell you something. If you want to build your business on YouTube, don't be in a rush. Okay. But also don't be perfect. You don't have to be perfect in order to do very, very well at this. You have to be authentic. You have to come with a purpose. You have to have a desire. You have to feed that desire. You have to grow your business. You have to use modern marketing like Facebook, okay? These platforms want you to advertise. That's why we advertise. We get rewarded through the platforms because our content is watchable. People like it. So other people advertise on my content. That's okay. I'm playing by the rules of the algorithm. And today, Coca-Cola doesn't really know about this that much. They're not buying all those ads and there. I shouldn't even tell you guys this. I'm giving all my competition the secret to beat me. And that is get better than me and advertise more than me. If you advertise more than me, you're going to do very, very well. But I got to promise you, we work extremely hard at authentic advertising. We will tell you the ups and downs, the bumps, the texture. We will tell you if it yellows, if it doesn't, we're going to teach you how to do this to set you up because we want you to not, I want you, I want your business today. And I want your business tomorrow. If I don't get your business tomorrow, I got to find somebody to replace you or else I slide backwards. We're growing because we retain our customers. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate this. Go check out that book. Uh, who asked that question? That was, uh, I don't know if it's that real. All right. So whoever asked that question, you're getting the ultimate top coat and let's send them the book. Okay. All right, Chris, have them, e have, have them email what? Mitch at stonecoatcountertops.com. Yes. Okay. Email Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com and, and make sure that we can verify your handle there on YouTube. We'll send you the top coat. We'll send you the book. Um, if you want me to sign it, you tell me in there and I'll sign it for you. Guys, till next time, remember, you got this. Hey!